uh, please pay attention. <coughs> I'm going to start with this part. You see, the idea of linear algebra is very, very important, particularly if you are doing something in mathematical sciences in the university or economics. Any time you are dealing with matrices, you know, uh, vectors, vector spaces, and things like that, most especially anybody that has been working on economics later, mathematics later, engineering later, this is going to be your BFF in the future. Okay? So it's always, I guess that's why it was in IB syllabus, so that you are at least familiar with some of the fundamental uh, topics there. <coughs> but of course, it's wider than this. As a matter of fact, my uh, thesis at the moment is still on the help. So you can see how wide it is. My professor is specializes on that area and he's been working on you know, interesting results on linear algebra, probably even before I was born. It's, it's that, you know, it's a huge study. Which is why I took some of you during the extended LSC that math, uh, think of math or any field of checking as China. Someone is trying to ask you about Macau. If you don't live in Macau, you probably wouldn't know anything about Macau. Do you understand? Or someone is asking you about, um, give me one popular city, let's say Shanghai, for example. If you do not live in Shanghai, how do you know? And everybody thinks, oh, but you're Chinese. Tell me about Shanghai. Like, Hello, I live in Beijing. Do you understand that? Or one that is even uh, personal to me. People see Miss Esther, and the question is, do you know where Mr. Daniel lives? And Mr. Esther had to, well, we're from Africa, but we have not even been to each other's country. I've never been to Kenya. She has never been to Nigeria. As a matter of fact, to get to Kenya from the closest airport to me is six hours flight. And everybody thinks, oh, you must be neighbors, right? Like you live in 10L, the other lives in 10M. Are you serious? So that is the same with the field of any subject in the demand. Someone is specializing on this doesn't mean they have much idea. Of course, they will have elementary stuff. What I'm trying to tell you, in essence, is that this is a huge area itself alone. Some people are working on maybe uh, some other area, differential equations, you know, interesting topics, areas in math, which, you know, for one reason or the other, you just fall in love with one area and you stick to it for the rest of your life. So, those that are going to do research in the future. So, for our elementary stage, we are going to be looking at systems of equation in general. Yeah. In summary, I put it that way. When we say systems of equation, we are talking about things of this form. Okay? Now, what are some of the properties that we need to understand about these systems of equation? What do we know about them? What are the major terminologies we need to get familiar with? That is why we are beginning with this. So to start with, what are linear equations? Oops. I'm okay. What are linear equations? What does the word linear say when you hear the word linear as students? Straight line. What else? Of course, linear equation will give you a straight line in the graph. Good. What else? The power is 1. The degree is 1. The highest power on x must be 1. Okay. So when we say linear equations, if there are n variables, I don't want to write x1, x2, so we'll be writing this notation. So let's assume we're in university already. So if there are x, uh, n variables, x1, x2, x3, x4, that's the meaning of xi. Because I told you i is from 1 to n. Okay? If there are n variables, then this is the form of a linear equation. So something like 2x plus uh, 2x1 minus 4x2, maybe plus x3 equals 7. That's a linear equation. Okay? But that is in three variables. You are used to something like this. From middle school, 2x plus 1 equals 5. I wish many of you wish to go back to this state, right? And life would be so much easier. So this is a linear equation in one variable. You can have a linear equation in two variables. 
Okay? You can have a system of two linear equations in two variables. Does it make sense? So the moment you have more than one, the word system has to be used. Especially. Okay? Anyway, when we talk about solution, as the name implies, results. Okay? The result when you solve the equation. How do you know this is a solution? If you put it back, it makes sense. The left must be equal to the right for all the equations in the system, not just for one of them. I'll give you an example. 2y plus, 2x plus y equals maybe 5, x plus y equals 1. What I assume this is the correct equation. Oh, x is 2 and y is 1. And I just, yay, I got the answer. Because when I put it here, 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. But when I put here, does it make sense? Then the so-called x is 2, y is 1 is not a solution. It may satisfy one of them, but if it doesn't satisfy all the equations, it's not a solution for all the equations. Your two, the implication is this. 2x plus y will look this way if you plot the graph. Right? Yes. It will look that way if you plot the graph because it's going to be a negative gradient. Similarly, that will also, maybe not parallel, but it might look this way if you plot the graph. What you have done, because this is going to be x minus, no, minus x plus 1. So it's also a negative gradient and the intercept will be 1. Y intercept will be 1. So we have this. Y intercept of this is 1. Uh, x intercept is actually 1. Y intercept of this is 5 over 2 or 2 over 5. Y equals what? 5 minus 2. That's 5. Y intercept is 5. And X intercept is when Y is equal to 0. You get 2.5. Something like this. So you can see. So they might end up meeting somewhere. But you claim 2, 1. X is 2, Y is 1. Maybe something here. You are only, what you got here. Uh, the fact that it satisfies left and right is only establishing that that point is exactly on the line. It doesn't mean that is where the two meet. The solution is where all the uh, things meet. Does it make sense? Be here. So try. Okay. So a solution must satisfy all the points in the equation, left and right. So if the solution, so I said by solution of the above linear equation, we mean some constant c i. So i also is from 1 to n. Okay? c1, c2, c3. Such that when you substitute x i is c i, left and right will make sense. That's what I mean by satisfied the equation. So, and I've just written an example, I think that's me. So, if you look at this, for example, of course, 1, 2, and 0 satisfy this. Yes? And it's only one equation. So, we can guess, just like we did here. But this is not because there are two equations and it must satisfy it. Am I making sense? Now, when you have an equation with more variable than the coefficient, uh, more variable than the equation, look at three equations, three variables, how many equations? Talk to me. Three equations and how many, uh, three variables and how many equations is this? Speak out, please. Three variables, but how many equations can you see? One. Just tell me what you see, not as soon, please. Okay? Here, somebody could guess an answer and it will be right. Somebody might guess another answer and it will also be right. But does that mean everybody is wrong? No. We are all right. Because we all found a result that satisfies the equation. I'm trying to think of, okay, yes, this is a perfect one. X plus Y. x plus y equals 3. You decided x is 1, y is 2. Are you right or wrong? I gave you just one equation, so this is a solution. Someone here decided 2, 1. Is that person wrong also? No. no. That's also a solution. There are so many solutions we can actually get. If I decide 0, 3, yes? yes. The mirror of that, 3, 0, yes? yes? You can think of so many other answers. Okay, so when you have a situation, most especially with number of variables being more than the number of equations, we're going to get to that very soon, you have multiple results. 
in this case, for example, there are infinitely many, just like this. There are infinitely many. Okay? So what we could do sometimes, look at what I did here. What we could do sometimes is, oh, okay, if x is actually a number, if I take x as 5, I, do you agree I can get an equivalent y that satisfies the equation? Yes? What would be y in that case? Negative 2. If I decide to pick my x to be minus 3, do I get a y that corresponds to it? What do I get? Six. Speak louder, please. Six. I get a 6. How many solutions have we gotten so far? Pass, please. Six. Six. Speak louder, Leo. Six. When you're speaking in class, you speak louder. I don't know what you're afraid of. Just speak. Even if it is rubbish to you, it might be sensible to me. Just speak out. All right? So far, we have how many solutions, everybody? Six. Six. But we can actually change x, right? And get corresponding y. Do you have a, a, a limited number of x values you could use? So there are infinitely many x, and so there will be infinitely many y. Which means this equation has infinitely many solutions. Does it make sense now? So let's assume the value of x to be picked. Because x is a number. It could even be decimal. It works with decimal. It works with rational numbers. The rational numbers. You can imagine combining, you can pick from set of rational, set of rational, which is like r in general. That's real number. You can imagine infinitely many values you can pick because you consider the set r. Am I making sense? If the number is p, so x is p, then my y will be 3 minus p, yes? So this is the solution set. Because there are so many elements in this set, if you take it as a set now. If the set is, oh, P, P, uh, X, Y, sorry. So I use this so that it will be in order. When you have a bracket like this, it has to be in order. But if I do this, set 1, 2, is the same, using the language of set now, it's going to be the same as 2, 1. Do you agree? But if I use order, then you know X first followed by Y. That's why I use these brackets in the note. Okay? So, remember, we, are, we assume the variable to represent the number. That variable is called a parameter. So, this form of representing the solution is called parametric form. We are going to get parametric stuff later. Even in calculus, we'll be dealing with parametric stuff. Okay? In graph, also, we'll be dealing with parametric stuff. So, that's what we have said here. If you assume P, because there are three variables, we assume two, then we express the third one in terms of it. If there are four variables, you assume the first one, second one, it's possible you are not able to express the other two in terms of that. Because at the end, we do not want the right hand side to contain any of the variable. That's the point. Okay? And that's what led to this. Okay? And that's what led to this. So these variables, the newly introduced values, are called the parameter. Is it class already? Almost. Almost. Anyway, now, system of equation, we talked about this. We have a system when you are dealing with more, especially. Okay. Well, of course, we can call this a system of how many equations? One by two. Maybe a system of one by two. Okay? But in general, we have the system of n by n if you have m equation and n variables. Think of it this way. Have you done matrices before? Yes. So when you say m by n matrix, what does it mean? It means n by n Again, m by n matrix, what does it mean? I don't know why you have to start with the column. I said m by n. Stop confusing yourself with some of these ways of re responding. If you have an m by n matrix, what is the first variable you see? Focus on the first variable you see. So again, what does it mean to have an m by n matrix, everybody? M rows and? N rows. So which, was, which is the row? The vertical or the horizontal? Speak louder, please. So on that, you can remember these weights. Each row represents what here? Speak louder, an equation. And each column represents, you can, can see very different variable in each column. 
So when we have an m by n linear system, we're talking about having m equations in n variables. This is generalization. It's possible m and n are equal. It's possible they are not equal. It's possible m is greater than n. It's possible m is less than n. It's possible m is equal to n. We have been dealing with the case of m is equal to n in middle school, which is when you have this time, a two by two linear system of equations. Okay? I ask you to solve this. I'm sure you have. What did you get? X is what? X is. Anyway, let's add, right? This is the easiest way to do it. If you had 2x equals 4, then x equals 2. From x equals 2, y is 2 minus 3x, give 3 minus 6, so y equals negative 4. Yes? Is that what you got? No. Oh, am I wrong? We just put the 2 back. It's 4x. 4x equals 4. Oh, my bad. Sorry. 4x equals 4. Maybe I didn't get to I guess that's why Clarissa was looking like, wait, 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 wait. Somebody stop that dude right there. You need to see the way she was looking like, wait, what are you doing? Anyway, did you get this, everybody? Yes. Okay, now I get enough sleep. So you can see that we have a solution, at least. There's an answer. Just like those ones also, there are answers. Let's look at this. Oh, okay, we can multiply this by 3, right? So we're going to have 6a minus 3b because negative 9 combined with this is equation 1 and the other equation. Oh, did you see a problem? Yeah. If you try to subtract, oopsie. This does not have solution. That's the answer. It doesn't have a solution, there's no answer. When you say that's the answer, it means I can find, oh, that's the person. Nobody is there. <laughs> you can't say that's the answer. But that's what you could do. There's a reason I gave this. When you have at least one solution, we say this linear system is consistent. When there are no solutions, we say the linear system is inconsistent. Okay? That's the comment I want to make. Okay, let's quickly write that. I think I have two minutes to let you run to your next lesson. <laughs> I have a proposal. Okay. I have a proposal. Um, come on, I'm not getting married again. Don't think I'm talking about that proposal. <laughs> All right, I've got to marry. You do it once in a life. That's just looking, wait, 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 is he gonna propose again? No, I did that already. <laughs> I have a proposal, and I don't know, you guys might say no, that's fine. Tomorrow is Chinese New Year celebration. The school closed early. Can we find one hour to stay after the celebration? Yes. <laughs> right after? The reason, listen, listen. The reason is, I want to at least get to some point on this before we come back from the other day. Like I told you, we are behind. I want to see the possibility of just maximizing, you know, any opportunity we get. If the school doesn't get locked by 1.15 where the staff get kicked out, then we can stay till 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. okay. Students can go officially by 1 after the celebration. I know we have to just come down and if, if, if you can't, that's fine. We will just find a way around it with the other weekend arrangement and stuff. But like I told you, we have two options. Is that we go at a very fast pace and you don't get the message fully. Or we go as we are right now and everybody understands something. But to do that, we may not cover everything. So we need to find every opportunity. Will it be okay by everybody? Karen looks like... I don't want to go. What? Yeah, just the two. Can One we break two. Two. <laughs> yes, of course. Karen? That's okay by me. <laughs> Akita? Some of you are not responding. I need to know. So it doesn't look like I'm arresting you. I'm taking you to a prison. I need to see. see. What? I need to see. I need to see what? I need to see. It. Okay, how about we talk about it and finalize on WeChat later? Yeah. Alright? So I will just write the last uh, note.
take a picture and send, okay, and you can watch the video later. All right, the last note is just, uh, I'll take a quick picture of the last part of the video. Okay.